Hello, YouTube. <laughs> All right, it's been a couple days. I thought I'd update you guys on what is currently going on. And as you can see, I have managed to install the um, cabinets that we had ordered from Home Depot, uh, despite the issues with the, um, the sink, the plumbing, which we ended up doing. We ended up getting that to not leak. And I took the cheap route and decided to just go ahead and use the um, use the plumber's tape, you know, that white tape. I don't know what kind of, it is plumber's tape. And um, my wife had the idea of putting some um, rubber um, washers, like gaskets, in between the connection. And that, that stopped the leak. So I ended up not using the the pipe cutter and the valve, even though I know everyone's saying you should add those things. The issue is that, um, how, I don't know how many times you're gonna mess with your sink. You know, this is, it's been replaced. It's all brand new stuff. So I didn't wanna spend like the extra $60 and also potentially make more problems. You know, when the existing line just fit, I just had to put a gasket on it and um, plumber's tape and it fixed the leak, so all's good there. So this is what the unit looks like uh, installed. And I don't know if you recall, I had to knock down this wall because the, the countertop and the cabinets was like one inch too long. You can see how I had to move it over like an inch. So I tore down the old wall, put up a new wall, and now everything fits. Um, what we did was we took elastomeric paint, you know, the same stuff I put on the roof and painted the back of this unit so that uh, if the windows open and any moisture gets in, hopefully that'll protect it somewhat because, you know, my wife insisted on that we need to have this window available to air out. So uh, the other thing that I've done, watch my food here and make sure it doesn't burn. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. I'm going to put a switch here. This, this thing's broken this uh, toaster oven the timer on it doesn't work the when you plug it in it comes on otherwise it works great so I'm probably gonna put a switch on it and you can't you can't put a timer on this one because I mean you make your own external timer but the, the built-in timer doesn't work but yeah I'm cooking up some um, chicken um, strips here to eat with the rice and I'm gonna put on some of this island spices and peppers Caribbean jerk sauce <laughs> from Walmart um, decided to go ahead and put three cabinets up here because I, I haven't decided yet, but I think I'm going to put stuff like, um, you know, blenders and other cooking type stuff here. On this end, I have installed the little island that I talked about. I went ahead and bought this, this uh, dual burner unit from Walmart. So I'll be using this if I need to get burners. But I also have this, um, I don't know what that's called. It's like a skillet. Is it a skillet or a pan that hooks up as an electric one? And you can see I made a little shelf here. This used to be a nightstand table that my wife picked up. Somebody was getting rid of it or something, and she got it. And I decided to repurpose it and use it as a shelving here so I didn't have to build it. This unit here is not bolted down or anything, so it can, you know, it's kind of heavy, but it can be moved if it needs need to be. So because uh, the unit was only this wide, you know, the... I guess we could have got a shorter counter and made it fit perfectly, but I wanted it kind of long because I wanted like a bar so you could have like two people sit there, you know, and eat if need be. And the plan is just to use this is going to be my main cooking spot because from here I can look out and see the TV. So, and if somebody's just, you know, talking to me while I'm cooking, they can sit there and eat or whatever. So you can make stuff here real quick. I did use a, a multi-plug extension cord here, even though you're not supposed to for these heaters, because it, it might trip it, but I just put it on here. That way, that way I can turn it off, because otherwise it stays on, even though it doesn't, you know, you're not, you don't have it on to draw power, but the unit uses power. By having a hard switch where you can turn it on and off, you don't pull any electricity when it's off. I don't know if you guys know that, it's called like phantom power. A lot of electronic devices, when you turn them off, they're still on, so they keep you know, using electricity. This way with a, a switch, a hardwired switch, when you flip it off, it's completely off. And um, what else? 
Don't know about the full layout, but I'm thinking the rice cooker might end up staying there, but I might put another uh, multi-plug outlet there so I can switch things on and off. Coffee pot. On this end, we might go ahead and keep the, um, the, the toaster oven. I'm debating, I gotta talk to the boss, that's my wife, to see about putting a microwave up here on this shelf. You know, putting the microwave over here, maybe, but she might not want it. She might want it to all be cabinet. And then the other thing is whether to leave it open or to close it off and turn it into, you know, like a cabinet similar to this. We, we didn't buy the the unit because they were like expensive. I think they were like 150 bucks each. It would have been like an, another $500 for cabinet, four or $500 just for those cabinets. So I could end up building it myself. Originally, I had this this wood that I was so it was kind of expensive, and I was going to use that as the bar thing. But you can see it's so thin; it was flimsy. So I ended up getting a um, uh, shelf. This was a shelf from uh, Home Depot. I think they sold it for I think it was like nine or eleven dollars for the shelf with the um, forty-eight inch, which everybody says forty-eight inch, but it doesn't measure the same. This is cat. This. This surface is supposed to be 48 inches, but you can see this was a little bit short. So one one company's 48 inches, another company's 47 and a quarter and three quarters. So they don't line up exactly, and I'm not going to worry about it. You know, it's just a tiny little spot. And initially, I had it. You can see I even cut the bottom out. I had it so it pressed all the way up, flush against the wall. But then when I was adding the shelves. I, I was going to make my own, but I was like, I don't really want to do more cutting, and, and you know, this is um, a unit that can be moved around. So when my wife picked up this end table, this um, nightstand, uh, you know, I asked her if I could butcher it, basically, take the top off and stuff. This is the top of that nightstand. It was wider than, than the base. But I went ahead and took that off and, and put a new piece of wood on it, you know, so it was exactly that width. And you can see it's a tight squeeze, but it's about an inch over. You know, it's an inch bigger than the space. And actually, if it was an inch smaller, then this pot wouldn't fit in there. So I may just leave it like that, a little gap I'm not going to worry about. And then that gap can be a gap for cables to run underneath. And over here, I'll probably get a, a USB charger. You know, just I'm trying to go simple. So I'll probably just pick up um, an external USB charger and put it here. So you can plug it in and charge phones or whatever while you're here. Maybe set this as a place to hold mail or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, I still got to figure out the logistics. I did pick up, those of you with an eagle eye, do you know where this black trash can came from? I'll give you guys a really good look here. If any of you can remember this trash can, that trash can is the same one that I picked up at the compound when I was out there living in hut 1.0. <laughs> do you do you remember when I went shopping at the compound and people had dumped all sorts of trash out there? That is a trash can that I picked up when I built hut 1.0. So it managed it managed to survive all these years, live in the RV for a while, and now it's in my house. So when I look at this trash can, I think of the hut not the hut, the, it wasn't even a hut, it was, um, yurt one, it was, you know, it was yurt 1.0 and hut 1.0. When I had, um, yurt 1.0, the first one that was built from the Dollar Tree, I had that thing. So every time I look at it now, I'm like, wow, this thing survived and came all the way here with me. So that's kind of funny. Um, the other components, if you guys are eagle eyes, see this wood. All these cabinet, all these uh, shelving and stuff came from Little Blue. Do, do you remember Little Blue had the, uh, the little kitchen at in the back, the little kitchen? Well, it ended up in a real kitchen. So I took the wood from Little Blue and used it to make um, shelving in the kitchen. Uh, cabinets. Evidently, you know, they, they open a certain way. So on this side, they're supposed to open this way, you know. And then on the other side, they're supposed to open the opposite way. It's things that you learn. They open this way. See how I, this one opened from the left side? This one opens from the right. This one opens from the right. But this one, because, see, remember I had about external pieces? It opens from the left. So it's opening the wrong way. So I'm going to ask my wife 
or I might just do it myself. I'm probably gonna have to swap the um, the hardware to the other side. I might be able to just flip. I might be able to just flip this um, this door. Oh, it's telling me to rotate the device so that it all opens, you know, the same way in the same direction. Just for for looks, you know, the way. It, and then this is probably gonna be stained. We were originally gonna paint everything white, but now my wife says she likes the wood. She likes the way the wood looks. So we're probably gonna stain it. Uh, I'm th she was wanting a darker stain, but I'm thinking light because I wanted everything kind of light looking. So that's still a point that needs to be worked out. I was thinking of just a clear stain, but she's thinking darker. And then this one here, I thought of staining, but you know, the wood, they don't match. This is like a lighter tone. So what I might end up doing is painting it the yellow, you know, just to make it look like it's actually built in, like it's part of the house. So if I paint the bottom here yellow and the side here yellow, then it'll kind of give the, the kitchen a cohesive look, you know, and, um, Wife wants doors over the over the pantry areas, so that one's gonna have to have a door. I'm gonna have to probably build one, and this one I'll probably have to build doors. And like I said, I may have to build on the top part. I know it's it's having issues when you go from dark to light here on the the video, but along this top shelving um, cabinet area, I'm, I may end up making it real cabinets instead of just a shelf, depending on what the boss says. <laughs> But that's where we're at. Um, this the the piece that I cut out for the that was kind of scary cutting that, you know, because you can see all my lines. They weren't straight. They're all one of the problems when you build um, in the style of um, what's his name, <laughs> the guy that builds all the lopsided houses. Um, when you build in his style, then you have to cut a precise hole. <laughs> you know, it's really scary because it has to be the right size. So I had made it a little bit too small and then I had to keep cutting and trimming and cutting and trimming and eventually we got the thing in there. So I'm happy, sink is working. And amazingly, amazingly, there's more water pressure. Well, hot water works great on here now and cold water works and there's more pressure. I don't know if you guys recall, I don't think you ever saw me use a sink previously, but something that I learned my, my wife was the one who told me that it was a problem with the sink itself being old and clogged up. Before, when you turned on the sink, the water trickled out. It barely came out. Like, and I thought maybe there was something clogged in the pipe, you know, that it was a bad connection in the pipe. But she told me she was pretty much sure that it had to do with the... Um, the old faucet, like the something was sealed or broken there, pieces had broken off, so it's clogging up the water flow. And she was absolutely correct because once we put in the new um the new hardware, it, it's flowing like you know I get a lot really strong pressure. I get hot instant hot water when I turn it on because the uh, the water the hot water is coming from the back room where the water heater is. The um well this doesn't work until you turn it on. When you turn the water on, you can, you can use that. Now, we weren't able to get this part in because I, I forget what the reason was. So this is the old one that came with the old um, sink. But I may end up changing that out and get my own little... It, it used to be a soap dispenser, I guess. You squeeze it or something. I don't, I don't know how that works. But I'm learning. And um, that's pretty much it. That's all that, that's been done. What, what remains to be done is a trim here. You can see this is the, the skinny trim that they had along all the doors. I'm going to pull these off, they're, they're like one and a half inch, and use them on the windows. So the windows have broken or bad ones, but they're also the, the two inch ones, or one and a half inch. So I'm going to put it along the, the missing trim for the windows, and do that to make sure all the windows look nice and trimmed. And I'll be just doing the same with this one. And then I'm going to take the um, these that I bought, some new ones. They're actually like the, the same material as the baseboard because they were the cheapest that we could find. It was a size which is a, a little bit under three inches. And I'm going to use that as a, a trim for the doors. So it'll make the doors look a little bit nicer with a, a you know, two and two and a half inch trim on it. And they sort of kind of match the baseboard. <laughs> so that's what's going on. What do you think?
Looks like a, a totally different place. This is something my wife picked up for free, I think. I think somebody was tossing, her boss or somebody was tossing this. So she brought, so she's been trying to get, she's been trying to get like a free furniture that people are tossing or, or not. She didn't just want to toss stuff, but she wants stuff that her boss is getting rid of, you know, where she works. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to spend a little bit of money on furniture to make things match. But she says, you know, we're trying to go cheap on this house because... We don't want to spend too much money, you know. It's, it's a little mobile home. We just wanted to get it habitable. Uh, so, you know, there's still some money that has to be spent on the structure, like the um, the room back there, you know, the, the outbuilding that needs a roof. We're going to probably have to contract that out because I don't want to do the roofing. I'm not very good at roof. <laughs> I don't want to put the whole thing together and have it leak, let me put it that way, or fall again. So, um, we're probably going to pay somebody to do that. Not probably. We're, I'm pretty sure we're doing that. We're, we're looking, you know, she's trying to contact some people to come do it. Um, right now, it's kind of a little bit warm in Florida. I have the AC off because this AC, I'm going to turn it on. And you can listen to what it sounds like. It sounds like a, a freight train. Um, make sure I unplug the, the, yeah, I unplug the heater, the, the oven, so my food's not burning. So, when you turn this on, listen how loud this is. It's way too loud, you know. I, I bought this thing. I should have bought a brand new one, but a brand new one was this was a ten thousand BTU unit. Brand new one, I think, was like two hundred and fifty dollars. I bought this used for like I don't know, it was a hundred, a hundred and twenty-five dollars. But he said it worked, but he didn't tell me it was this loud. <laughs> and I, I took it all apart and tried to oil it and find out where the noise is coming from. I think the fan is hitting something, but I couldn't fix it. As far as I could tell, I fixed where, you know, it, it, it looked like it was hitting, but still, no, no, the noise is still there. So this is literally loud. It is super cool, though. When, when you run it, it does cool down the whole room. It cools down this whole house, this whole front area here. So 10,000 BTUs, and then each of the rooms have their own AC that can be used as needed, you know. So uh, other than the, the door trim, the window trim... We need to finish up this hallway and the second bedroom and then get all the doors and stuff. I got to try to find doors that fit. You know, one, one of the hardest things with um, working on the mobile home is normal size home stuff doesn't fit. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was looking at um, videos where other people were renovating their, their mobile home. And I think they said the same thing, like where they had the existing cabinet, the I think I think these these um, mobile homes are all the same size, like a single wide. I think it's like a standard, and they're all the same size. But people were talking about when they were trying to renovate their their mobile home, like an older one, not as old as this one. This one's uh, 1967 was when they made it, so it's pretty old. It's 54, almost 55 years old. Um, maybe 55 now because we hit 2022. Yeah, 55 years old. This mobile home. Um, Remember I told you it was like an inch too short? Somebody else I was watching on YouTube trying to renovate their um, mobile home said the same thing. It was like one inch off. And they were at the same quandary I was, like, well, not to cut stuff or extend the wall. So I think mobile homes are, like, off, you know, as far as um, if you ever try to do this and replace the existing um, kitchen cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and read your comments and address it before I sign off here. Um, thank you to all of you that are saying it looks nice. I'm, I'm glad it looks nice. <laughs> would, have, would have sucked if it looked bad after all that effort. Um, let's see. Janet says, you'll be a woodworker, construction worker, plumber yet. Uh, no, I won't. <laughs> I, I don't. I like building stuff, you know, like if it's um, for me, because it's not like it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, but I don't think I could do this for other people because they'll say, hey, you got a gap over here, <laughs> you know, or, or hey, this is slightly lopsided. Look, look at the, the, the shelving here. I don't know if you can see the base where it connects here. And then on this side, it gets, you know, things are not time focusing. It's like one eighth of an inch taller. It's a slightly off, and I might fix it, but I might just, I tried to fix it. I was like, this seems to be the best I can do. <laughs> you 
And then, of course, when I measured stuff, I forgot to adjust the height of the adding the two by two. And I had them cut this thing a little too short. Originally, I was going to design this, this base, this wall portion to come up even higher, like this high, you know, like about two inches higher than it is. And I messed up. So I had to cut another piece. You can see here I had to cut like a one inch piece to fit in the gap. You can see that. I may fill it with, with filler or something to make it look a little bit better and then paint it so you can't really see it too much. But when you do work like this, I don't think anyone would want to hire you as a contractor. <laughs> but if you're doing it for your own place, you know, I think it's acceptable. Also, the other thing is um, when I was dealing with that plumber, that older gentleman at, at uh, Home Depot, he says, look, you know, because we were talking about the plumbing stuff and how expensive all of it was. He was like, you should do what works for you. Don't worry about the next guy. So fix it cheap or whatever you want to spend for yourself. And, you know, if it works good enough for you, that's all that matters. Don't worry about, man, I should put in a cutoff switch or whatever because... The next person who has to work on this might need it, you know. I don't really foresee myself having to work on the sink again because, you know, it's not been replaced unless we decide to add a dishwasher, which we're not going to do. You can see by having um, no dishwasher, you know, this is what we do, and, and there's not a big pile of stuff. So as I finish eating, I put it in here if I don't want to do it right away, but by that night, there might be one or two or three plates in here. I just rinse it all off. Set it here to dry, drip dry, and then when it's dry, you can set it there and then eventually put it up on the cabinets and whatnot. So you never have like a bunch of dishes and stuff. So you don't need like extra, you know, you don't need to, you don't want, people don't like to run the dishwasher unless it's full, which means you're leaving food and stuff, you know, dirty plates and stuff sitting there. So it's better if, because it's just pretty much me and my wife, you know, sometimes the kids come over. So it's not too many people. When it's only one or two, three people, two people, you could manually hand wash your dishes. And you do them right after each meal or at the end of each day, you know. And I, th I, I think it even uses less water that way and less energy, obviously. Um, that's pretty much it. You just scroll through here. Hello, Oritz. Good to see you on here. Greetings from Germany. Guten Tag. Actually, it might be nighttime over there, right? Guten Tag. And your English is very good. <laughs> Although you misspelled greetings. Thank you, Just Me. Twelfth Man. Yeah, a little trim. Well, I'm not even going to trim it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to putty it and I'm going to paint it yellow. Once, once I paint it, nobody sees it. It's up under there. Uh, I'm going to try to get some stools, some bar stools, I'm trying to get some with swivel that can spin around so you can swivel and watch the TV from there. The other thing I'm thinking is I want to get the kind with the round bottom, you know, for the bar stools because this floor is just that laminate. And if you get like legs, you know, on a bar stool, it might poke down and rip holes. So that's some consideration if you have laminate flooring. Um, this is like, I don't know, laminate. This is um, vinyl. It's a thin roll of vinyl. And we already saw what that little nail did over there. It snagged the floor and made a hole. So what I'm thinking is, if I get a bar stool, I need to get one that has a, a, a round base on the bottom. You know, big, fat, single base. That's huge. So that way you don't rip the floor. The other thing that needs to happen is we'll probably have to get some mats and rugs and stuff to put down in certain areas where people stand. You know, like one here for the cooking area, one here for the dish area. I'll see if my wife wants to keep the trash can there. I pulled that out from the RV. So I started to bring some stuff from the RV here for use. And um, hoping to have this thing, right now it's only probably about like 50% functional. But hoping to have it like 100% up and running and stuff um, within the next week or so. And hoping to close out, you know, the, the whole door frame and the other room. Because then we can actually start to get furniture and try to live in the house. You know, right right now, I mean, we're living in it. But, you know, it's like if you're living on a, in a construction site. <laughs> Constantly coming out to see this stuff. You know, it's kind of annoying. And I'm saving this because it could make a nice little countertop for like a van build or something. 
It's not, see how crappy my cuts were? It's not like the best cutting job. But I'm thinking like if I had a van build or something, although honestly, it's kind of heavy. This, that particle board is really, really heavy. Oh yeah, I ended up not using the, um, the MDF or that, I don't know what that paper is called, but the board, the, the, it's like made out of pressed paper. It's really heavy. I cut it to size, sadly. It was a little longer than this width. It was like an inch longer. So I cut off about an inch. And then when I went to put it up there, I felt how heavy it was and how it kind of sat on my, sh you know, my beams. And it was like really, really heavy. And I was like, this doesn't even have anything on it. It's heavy. And the only things really holding it up are little screws into this thin little wall. So I decided not to use it. So um, I got it sitting right there right now. And because I cut it, I can't take it back. So I'll have to come up with a project for this. It's this stuff. It's heavy. Yeah, it looks like wood, but it's made out of paper. So I'll probably use it for something else, but I don't really want to use it for shelving because it it weighs a ton. And then this wood is, you know, the expensive um, plywood that I'm thinking of possibly using to make, if, if it works out correctly, I might be able to make cabinet doors for that cabinet with it. But I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of short on that wood. So got to discuss with the boss what she wants. If she wants me to make cabinets, I make cabinets. Otherwise, you know, I'm just going to... What I was planning on doing was just putting some decorative wood, you know, just coming down. Or I might just leave it all completely open. But, you know, the, the boss is the one who determines what happens next. Eric wants to know how much the mobile home cost. I paid... Um, it was a tax deed auction on this house. I paid about twenty seven twenty a, a little bit under twenty eight but it included the land. I, it really wasn't worth it you know um the land itself was worth almost twenty eight because uh land around here was selling for about um i think the lot next to mine just sold for just the lot itself was like twenty three or twenty four uh, this one had the mobile home on it. It looked like it was okay in the pictures. It looked pretty bad outside, but I didn't realize how bad it was on the inside. It was a hundred times worse on the inside than it was on the outside. And it was pretty bad on the outside. So if I was going to do something like this again, I would definitely, you know, if, if I saw it look pretty bad outside, I can count on the inside a hundred times worse. <laughs> I would not do it. I would not do it again. Uh, I, that's not saying I wouldn't buy another tax deed house. Actually, I may try to save up some money and get another tax deed house. Maybe a real house. You know, uh, a foundation house. But part of me is leaning towards really liking this house. Even though my initial plan was like, mm, we'll just get it fixed up and we'll live in it. And then maybe we'll rent it out or sell it after we get done. But now part of me is saying, man, the price, the cost of living here was cheaper than living in the van. <laughs> so, and if, if you live in a van, if you live in a van, and you know what the heck I'm talking about. There's no space. I can stand up here. Look, I have almost a semi-vaulted ceiling. You know, it goes up, and I, I can run. I'm on the grid if I want to be. Now, the fan right now spinning here, cooling me down, that's solar. It's running off solar. And, you know, I, I can have the lights and everything. What's that over here? No, that's the fan. So the fan is running completely off solar and the lights can run off solar. And I don't have everything hooked up yet for solar. But, and I started thinking about expanding the solar. I think I might get all new battery bank and increase the battery bank. Because I think that's where my weak point right now is the battery storage for solar. So I might spend upwards of six, $700 on batteries. That would give me more uh, storage power to potentially run all the lights and more appliances from the house, especially during the daytime when it's charging up. I only have a thousand watts of panel. And out of that, I think only maybe about 500 to 700 is usable. You know, it's actually pulling power. But my battery bank gets fully charged during the day and I'm not even using that electricity. If I have a larger battery bank, I can store it more so it can be used during the nighttime, you know, for running lights and maybe even like right now I can run the rice cooker, which I'm going to try to do because I cook rice every day. This is only 300 watts. 
So the plan is kind of load balancing, like stuff that I do every day that can run off solar. I'm going to start doing so I can cook um, rice, uh, possibly run the um, toaster oven, which is about 1,800 watts. You know, if I have that large system, I can do it during the day. I mean, I can do it at night, but really you want to do it in the day because the sun, the sun is giving you electricity. So if I cook during the day while the sun is still out and have the food ready for dinner, you know, I'm cooking with solar. A lot of people assume that when you're cooking with solar, you got a solar oven and you're out there in the sun cooking, but you don't have to do that. You can get a solar power system, a battery bank that stores your electricity, and you can run normal appliances, whether it's an electric skillet, you know, like I could even use that to cook. So I'm planning on cooking with solar, but not in the traditional sense. I'll be cooking with solar using regular uh, electrical appliances and stuff. So it looks like a normal house, behaves like a normal house, but my electric bill is going to be like really low because I'll be using the solar to run air conditioning. I mean, not solar, um, gridded power to run like air conditioning in the refrigerator. I could run the, um, like if I plug that thing into the solar right now, it would run, but only for about an hour and then the battery strained. So you would need a really large system to run air conditioning. And I don't want to do that. But, you know, the fan during the daytime, I can run it. I can run it for, till you know, late, well, late afternoon or early afternoon. Then I, then I have to shut it off because I need the, the system, the batteries to charge completely up before nighttime. And if I increase my, um, my battery bank, then that might not be an issue. So you got to kind of watch how much power you're using at what time. Yeah, so he says, uh, Justine says I can buy felt and put it on the stool legs. That will save the floor. That's an idea if I can't find one of those um, stools that I want. The, the issue is I don't want to pay a lot of money. You know, it's like I'm debating how much we want to buy new and use. My wife wants free furniture and stuff that people are tossing or, or we can find, you know, somewhere. She doesn't even want me to buy them at Goodwill. <laughs> She's like, let's go as cheap as possible. So, you know, I'm like... But then I look at it and I was like, honey, for $20, we can make some, get something that looks nice, that will fit the, the decor of the house. So that, that's like a debate issue between my wife and I. You know, it's like she says, listen, do you see this chair? Do you see this nice leather chair thingy, recliner thing? And I said, yeah. And she says, that cost me zero. <laughs> I said, yeah, okay, that one looks nice. But that thing you want in our bedroom, it looks bad. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. And she brought this, which looks okay, but I'm like, do we really need it? You know, it, it's normally an entertainment center stand, but we, this TV is mounted on the wall. I'll show you that's a messy mount I had to do. But I, I don't know. I'm like, sometimes it's not worth arguing. <laughs> the wife is always right. The wife is always right. So don't, don't, I'm not going to argue on stuff like that. Whatever she wants. Whatever she wants. So. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and sign out here. I do appreciate all of you uh, taking the time to comment, all of your suggestions. I do look them up. I, I read them up, read them, and try to follow up on them and, and uh, try to do what I can implement. And um, I'm just looking forward to trying to finish this thing up and then um, being able to do projects like maybe build out a van or something or build another hut or yurt maybe in the backyard like some of you are suggesting. Um, but I don't want to build it just for fun. I want to build it for use. So I might build like a, a greenhouse, a yurt greenhouse or a, a greenhouse hut. But I don't want to spend any money or at the most maybe one or $200, you know. So it might be built from pallets, um, basically really cheap stuff. But I also don't want it to look junky. It needs to look nice, you know, because we're in a house now, not out in the woods. So I want it to look somewhat nice so that people don't complain and um, not spend too much money on it. All right, I am going to go ahead and sign out. Thank you all. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Once again, I appreciate you and um, your comments, your suggestions, and your kind thoughts. I think uh, that's helped me quite a bit. Have a great day, everybody. Take care now.